We get a lot of questions about installing electric bidet seats in RVs. This is a tricky thing to do because there's only select few toilets and bidet seats that will work in an RV. Today, we're gonna walk you through the ins and outs of installing a bidet seat on a toilet in an RV so that you can set one up in your own. For this video, we are going to install the Cascade 3000 bidet seat on the Dometic 310 toilet. We've picked this pairing because it works very well together. A lot of RV toilets may not work. We're going to talk about what to look for in an RV toilet to determine whether or not it will work for you. We're gonna talk about some modifications you need to make to the toilet to make it work and everything you need to know. My name is Daniel Johnson. I'm your bidet expert and I'm the owner of manybidets.com where over the past eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. So let's start by taking the seat off of our existing Dometic 310 toilet. To do that, we need to pop these little plastic covers, a little screwdriver under there does a good job of that. And now grab a Phillips and loosen this. The nut on the bottom side has a little nub on it, so you can just hold it with your hand. You don't need a wrench down there. There's that nub. This side is up, this side is down, and you can just hold this nub on the bottom. Now, the reason that we picked the Dometic 310 is because this back portion can be removed. So one of the problems that we run into with RV toilets is their compact design. Obviously with an RV toilet, you want it to be compact because there's limited space in an RV, but their compact design can make it hard to put a bidet seat on them. So we've just removed the toilet seat and this plastic cover, which has opened up the back a little bit for the next steps of our installation. Let's go ahead and drain the water from the toilet next. So we want to turn off the water supply uh, so that there's not more water flowing to the toilet. And then we can flush the toilet just by pushing down on the flush lever here at the bottom. Once it's stopped draining and we're set to go there, we're going to disconnect this hose. So we're going to put a rag underneath this connection, just in case some water pours out. And using a crescent wrench, we're gonna loosen up this connection and disconnect that hose. So you can see we got a little bit of water there. Good thing we had a rag. So in order to install a bidet seat on an RV toilet, there are a few necessary pieces that wouldn't normally come with a bidet seat. One of them is this, uh, this particular T, which is a half inch, half inch, half inch T, one female and two male. And the other is a pipe extension. Uh, you can see we created one here with a pipe and then uh, a couple of fittings that will allow us to connect it to the pipe here, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now, if you wanted to source these pieces yourself, you're more than welcome to. However, if you want to simplify matters, uh, when you go to our website, manybidets.com, and check out the Cascade, uh, there will be an option when purchasing there to include the RV kit, and we'll send you all these pieces with your purchase should you decide to go that route. So let's go ahead and start by installing this T-connector. We're gonna go ahead and get that snug here give it a little twist with the wrench, but we don't want to over tighten either. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and reconnect our water supply. Make sure that on this, you also have your rubber washer. We're gonna go ahead and connect that. Again, hand tight and then snug it up just a hair.
And now we've got our offshoot that we'll use to connect the water supply for the bidet seat here in a moment. So as we talked about, one of the limitations that come from an RV toilet is limited space here in the back. We are going to remedy that in this scenario using the kit that I was talking about a moment ago, which again, you can find on our website under the Cascade 3000 page, which is linked in the video description. We're going to start by pulling out the vacuum breaker in the back. It is just a pipe fit into a rubber seal. Uh, so it is a very tight pull. You might feel like you're going to break something pulling this out because of how tight it is, but it is just a pipe in a rubber fitting. So once you do a little bit of wiggling, it should come out. So there's our pipe. Now we need to create space. So to create space, we are going to install this adapter. So go ahead and snug that in, make that nice and snug. And now we have extra length here. So with that extra length, we are now going to have room for the bidet seat, in this case, the Cascade 3000. We're gonna go ahead and put that back in. It's important that this remains upright for the vacuum breaker to work appropriately. And now we can go ahead and install the bidet seat. So bidet seats connect to toilets a little bit differently than a standard toilet seat. To connect the Cascade 3000 to the toilet, we're just going to place this mounting bracket over those bolt holes and then slide these bolts through the porcelain holes and through the mounting plate and connect the two together using a rubber cone washer, a little plastic washer, and a nut on the bottom side. The plastic washer is designed to hold the cone washer in place the thinner portion of the rubber cone washer goes up so that it can grip the porcelain. We're just gonna slide those right on here. We can see how if I let go, that black plastic washer holds that cone washer in place. Now I can just put this bolt on the bottom side. The top is a square head. So that square head allows it to uh, not need to be held with a screwdriver or anything like that. It's just held by the mounting plate itself. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We'll get it a little bit snug, but not too tight. We can always re-tighten at any point that we need to. And now we're ready for the Cascade 3000 seat itself to be installed on the toilet. So we want to install a round cascade on this toilet because it is a round toilet. And we are just going to line up. There's a couple of grooves in the bottom of the cascade and those are going to line up with grooves here on either side. So we're gonna line those up and we're just going to push back until it snaps into place. And you can kind of hear it snap there. And then we can work on lining it up front to back. And once it's where we want it, we just finish tightening these bolts down to hold it in said position. Now, because of how small an RV toilet is, it's still going to overhang a little bit here in the front more than likely, uh, but the Cascade does do a decent job with the kit that we have on our website to uh, fit an RV toilet as one of the sleekest looking units on the market when it comes to fitting on an RV toilet. So here we have it. The, the bidet portion is now installed. We now have to connect it to the water supply. So the, with the provided hose, we're going to connect one side, the side with the elbow to the bidet Again, hand tight, and then if we want to tighten it just a touch more, we can use a wrench to do that. 
And then the other side connects to the T connector that we installed at the very beginning of this video and tighten that down. So now we've got the water hookup all set up. We've moved the, uh, the vacuum breaker further back so that there's room for the cascade to sit. But this is an electric bidet seat. The great thing about an electric bidet seat is it's very feature rich, but it does need an electrical source. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this seat in and we can hear it, to, we can hear it start to boot up. Now, you need to make sure that you are working with an RV that can handle a standard pull. About uh, 13 amps is the top pull on the Cascade 3000 with a 110 volt circuit. So make sure that your RV can handle that uh, before moving forward with a project like this. So now that we've got the Cascade 3000 plugged into electricity, we need to make sure that we install batteries in the remote. So you can take the back wall mount off. This can be mounted anywhere with adhesive or screws. Put the batteries into the back. These are two AA batteries. Put the battery cover on and put the wall mount slider back on should you decide to do so. And now we need to turn the water supply back on to check for leaks. All right, water supply is on and it looks like we are leak free. You'll notice we did have a cloth ready just in case it wasn't leak free. Uh, whenever you're testing for leaks, it's a good idea to have a towel or something handy just in case there are leaks. You should check for leaks anywhere where we've made a connection. So there's three connections here for the T. Those are all good places to check for leaks. You'll also want to check for leaks here on the water inlet and where the hose connects to uh, the bidet seat itself. I'll also want to try a flush so that I can check for leaks right back here where the flush connector is. I can see water pouring into the bowl so I know water is making it into the toilet. I can also see that there's no leaks back here where the breaker valve connects to the, the porcelain bowl itself. So I've checked that for leaks. Lastly, we can check the sprayer if you got the version with the sprayer. And that portion of the vacuum breaker is working as well. So we're good there also. Now that we've done all of that, we'll want to check the cascade itself. When testing it, it's important to remember to activate the seat sensor to do a proper test. If you don't activate the seat sensor, the seat won't work. And the seat's probably not broken, it's probably just not activated. This keeps you from running a wash accidentally when you're not seated on the unit. To do this, start with your hand in the middle of the seat and work to the right until you hear the self-cleaning cycle start which tells us that the seat sensor is now activated. With that being done, now we can hit the wash button. And we can see that the wash starts. We know it works. Once I remove my hand from the seat sensor, the wash stops because again, that's a safety feature and the nozzle retracts, I could have also hit the stop button on the remote to, uh, to turn that wash off. So we now know we have a fully functional unit. Keep in mind that for today's video, we installed the Cascade 3000 bidet seat on the Domitic 310. Consider making your next bidet purchase from manybidets.com to help support us and help us to uh, be able to afford to create additional great content like this. We're also working through some high-end toilet videos for your home. So if you're interested in that and interested in a high-end bidet toilet, subscribe to this channel so that you get those videos when they're coming out. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you like what you saw. Visit our website to live chat with us, email us, call us, or text us, or comment on this video. 
with additional videos that you'd like to see or questions about this video. Thank you again for watching and have a fantastic day. Minilittlebidets.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.